Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Once again, welcome to another edition of Heroes of Islam, and I'm your host, Ali Rasul. A companion of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when he went to Basra as governor of the city, he called the inhabitants to a meeting and addressed them, "The Amir al Mu'minin Omar." has sent me to you to teach you the book of your Lord and the sunnah of his prophet and to clean your streets for you. People were taken aback when they heard these words. They could easily understand that one of the responsibilities of a Muslim ruler was to instruct the people in their religion. However, that one of his Who was this governor of whom the Prophet's grandson, al Hassan, may Allah be pleased with him, said, There was no rider who came to Basra who was better for its people than he. His real name was Abdullah ibn Qais, but he was and continues to be known as Abu Musa al Ashari. He left his native land, Yemen, for Mecca immediately after hearing that a Prophet had appeared and that a prophet had appeared there who was a man of rare insight who called people to the worship of the one God Allah. At Mecca, he stayed in the company of the Prophet and gained knowledge and guidance. He returned to his country to propagate the word of Allah and to spread the mission of the noble prophet we have no further news of him for more than a decade than just after the end of the Khaybar expedition, he came to the Prophet in Medina. His arrival there coincided with that of Ja'far ibn Abi Talib and other Muslims from Abyssinia. And the Prophet welcomed them all with joy and did not come alone. He came with more than 50 persons from Yemen, all of whom had accepted Islam. Among them were his two brothers, Abu Rum, Abu Barda. The Prophet referred to the whole group as Asharis. In fact, he sometimes referred to all Yemenis as Asharis after Abu Musa al Ashari. He often praised the group for their soft and tender hearted nature. example of good behavior. He once said of them, if the Asharis go on an expedition, or if they only have a little food among them, they would gather all together and gather all that they have on one cloth and divide it equally among themselves. They are thus from me and I from them. Abu Musa soon became highly esteemed in the Muslim community. He had many great intelligence and sound judgment and was ranked as one of the leading judges in the early Muslim community. People used to say, the judges in this ummah are four, Omar, Ali, Abu Musa, and Zaid ibn Thabit. Abu Musa had a natural, uncomplicated disposition. He was by nature a trusting person and expected people to deal with him on the basis of trust and sincerity. Now in the battlefield of jihad, he was a warrior of great courage and endurance and skill. The problem is Abu Musa. Abu Musa's insight and the soundness of his judgment did not allow him to be deceived by any enemy in the battle. In the battle conditions, he saw situations with complete clarity and ex executed his actions with a firm resolve. Abu Musa, a companion that was in command of the Muslim army, traversing the lands of the Sasanian Empire at Isfahan, the people came to him and offered to pay the jizya in return for 
fighting. However, they sincere in their offer and merely want an opportunity to mount a treacherous attack on the Muslims. But Abu Musa, however, saw through their real intentions and he remained on the alert. Thus, when the Isfahanis launched their attack, the Muslim leader was not caught off guard. He engaged them in battle, and before midday of the following day, he had won a decisive victory. In the major campaigns, the major Musa's role was outstanding. He distinguished himself as a military commander. The Persian commander, Hormuzan, had withdrawn his numerous forces to the strongly fortified city of Tuster. The Caliph Umar did not underestimate the strength of the enemy, and he mobilized powerful and numerous, a numerous force to confront Hormuzan. Among the Muslim forces, Al-Bara ibn Malik and his brother Anas, Majra al-Bakri, and Salama ibn Raja. Umar appointed Abu Musa as the commander of the army. So well fortified was Tuster that it was impossible to take it by storm. Several attempts were made to breach the walls, but these proved unsuccessful. There followed a long and difficult siege, which became even more testing and agonizing for the Muslims when, as Persians began throwing down iron chains from the walls of the fortress, at the ends of which were fastened red iron hooks. Muslims were caught by these hooks and were pulled up either dead or in the agony of death. Abu Musa realized that the increasingly unbearable impasse could only be broken by a resort to stratagem. Fortunately, at this time, Abu Musa induced him to return behind the walls of the fortified city and use whatever artful means he could to open the city's gates from within. A special force of hand-picked men they succeeded well in their task, opened the gates, and made way for Abu Musa's army. Within hours, the Persians were subdued. In spite of the fact that Abu Musa was a strong and powerful warrior, he often left the battlefield transformed into a penitent, weeping person. In a voice that was profoundly stirring. It stirred the souls of all who listened to him. Abu Musa only participated in fighting against the armies of the Mushrikeen, armies which tried to oppose the religion of Allah and extinguish the light of faith. When fighting broke out among the Muslims, he fled from such conflict and never took part in any of it. Such was his stand in the conflict that arose between Ali and Muawiyah. It is in relation to this conflict the name of Abu Musa al-Ash'ari is most widely known. Briefly, Abu Musa's position appeared to be that of a neutral one. He saw Muslims killing each other and felt that if the situation were to continue, the very future of the Muslim Ummah would be threatened. To start off with a clean slate, the Khalifa Ali should give up the position and Muawiyah should relinquish any claim to be Khalifa and the Muslims should be given a free choice to elect whoever they wanted as a Khalifa. It was of course true that Imam Ali held the ball could only have as its object the challenging and overturning of the rule of law. However, developments had gone so far that the dispute had become so bloody and there seemed to be no end in sight except further bloodshed that a new approach to a solution seemed the only hope of avoiding further bloodshed and continuous civil war. 
When Imam Ali accepted the principle, to represent him. But an influential section of his followers insisted on Abu Musa. Their reason for doing so was that Abu Musa had not taken part in the dispute from its beginning. Instead, he had kept aloof from both parties when he despaired of bringing about an understanding and reconciliation and putting an end to the fighting. Therefore, they felt he was the most suitable person to be the arbitrator. Imam Ali had lamb and his truthfulness and sincerity, but he knew that the shrewdness of the other side and their likely resort to ruses and treachery. He also knew that Abu Musa, in spite of his understanding and his knowledge, despised deceit and conspiracies and always wanted to deal with people on the basis of trust and honesty, not through cunning. Ali therefore feared that Abu Musa would be with the victory of guile over honesty, and that the situation would end up being more perilous than it was. Adjugation, nonetheless, began with Abu Musa representing the side of Ali, and Amr ibn al-As representing the side of Muawiyah. For further information about this historical event, see the book Al-Akhbar At-Tiwal by Abu Hanifa. Thank you once again for tuning in to the Heroes of Islam, and I've been your host, Ali Rasul. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.